Shots up for three is good. Three pointer up is just off. And they get the offensive rebound and the throw down by Paddy Ek Wang. That's Billy with a great pass. Two players that have come on most recently combining that. Cooch Bar. Crossover. And hanging in the air. What a move. What a move. And Shudi Bile. Great body control to not. And the pressure ramps up from Rwanda, who stepped forward. Hands up. Nuni Omar and the throw down. Dang a truth. Penetrate kick shots up and good for three. For Rwanda. Two possession game at the moment. And what a move by Chudier Bile leaning back. And the zone defense for Rwanda all the way across. And they have Penet and they're in their zone again, Rwanda. So South Sudan trying to get it inside and back out. And the three is down. Kwani, Kwani. And he will go to the line. Great pass from Omot. And Abby Manor gets it taken away. And the throw down off the miss. Denga Kouf just throws it down. Right at the buzzer, two points for Rwanda. Every point is crucial. So, South Sudan, first time in the World Cup qualifiers. Coach Deng back at the helm. Quick one to gentlemen is, what's the appreciation that you make of the role of uh, South Sudan's performance? It's the first time that you're playing this tournament. Did you expect such a fine start? I'll start with you, Kwani. Yeah. Um, first of all, yeah, like you said, our first time here at the uh, World Cup qualifiers. Um, you know, we know every team that's here is here for a reason. They def um, they worked hard to get here, and they all deserve to be here. Uh, so, you know, Rwanda always play hard, um, always coming a lot of energy. For us, it was just about matching that and, you know, trying to outplay them. And, you know, it's gl I'm glad we did that in the second half, but first half we started slow, so we're just happy we were able to pull that out. Lou? Uh, before, before I jump in real quick, I just want to highlight uh, Kwan here. I think, you know, for, I know Bal is coming up and Kwan is playing in Croatia, but I'm going to keep saying it for every tournament, Kwani leads us, he comes here, he does interviews. These are the kind of players that we should be bringing back to play. Uh, Kwani should be playing at a high level. He's one of the best players I know basketball. He's one of the best players I have a pleasure to coach and watch. Uh, and I think it's time to start paying attention to it. But to skip to, skip to our performance, uh, we have really, basketball is something that, you know, we're very thankful for in terms of the players and the options that we have. There's a lot of players who committed to really building this program. And for us, we know it's our first time to be here in the World Cup qualifiers, and we learn it as we go along. Uh, but one thing that we do know, we're always going to play hard. We play with a chip in our shoulders because we feel that we have an opportunity to do something special with, uh, with basketball. No, you just like the way they're being coached. Uh, we we had uh, the chance to play Rwanda often, so we knew what we were facing, and we were able to win those matchups. They're very good at rebounding. Uh, they're very good at getting you out of your comfort zone. In the first quarter, I thought our defense wasn't great. Uh, they scored 23, I believe, in the first quarter. Offensively, I wasn't worried. I felt like we were rushing into our shots. We had open shots, but we were rushing. Uh, I just told the players to stick with our defense and with our team we always have a plan A and a plan B. If not, then we go to plan C. When we see how the game is going, these guys are good enough to adjust and I thought we did a good job in the second half of just, you know, taking away what was easy for them in the first quarter. Yeah, no. Kwani, what do you think was the deciding factor in the game? Yeah. Um, definitely defense. Um, you know, the first, first half we started off um, started off, you know, um, 
a bit relaxed in the second second half, especially third quarter, we were able to pressure them a lot more, um, get up with them, get them out of their plays. And I think once we started doing that, um, you know, we, we started getting steals, going down there, converting. Um, and, you know, guys just started playing together. And I think that's definitely what it, what, what it was. It's all defense. That's what wins us games. It doesn't get easier because after this, you've got to play two incredible teams, Tunisia and then Cameroon. How do you go into those two fixtures? How do you prepare them, Lou? We're going to have to... <clears throat> Tunisia is a very good team. Uh, it's a team that we faced before. Um, you know, for us, we're going to do our best to be prepared for tomorrow's game. Uh, I told the guys, you know, just because we are a new country, you know, every time we play, it's almost like we're making history. But at the same time, the way the schedule is, we got to have a short-term memory. And whatever the good and the bad, let that go. Tomorrow, you're a new team. You're facing a, a very... Uh, difficult team that's very good is going to take a lot out of the whole team. But one thing that we do know and we are committed to is we're going to play hard and take our chances. Kwani? Um, it's like Lou said, tomorrow um, you know, we're going up against a team that obviously won the last Afro Basket, a very experienced team. Um, you know, we just have to trust uh, in the game plan that our coaches have for us. Uh, go back, watch the tape, just come out, be, be as prepared as we can. And at the end of the day, it's just about going out there, executing the process, just playing ball, playing defense, trusting in plan A, B, C. So what, uh, just listen to what our coaches have, uh, have in plan for us. All right. It is Makai. Goes to Omot along the baseline. A good start for South Sudan. Then they cleared the side for Omot. And we'll see that with some of these early plays from their team. Omot got them going into the hands of Avada. He's trying to make some room. Deep into the paint, he scores and he is fouled. Said though, look at Avada, just uses his bod. Near travel against Gakuth. And then the finish is good, down the middle. Wang. Out of nowhere, explodes to the basket. Where did this come from? Hardly an opening, Wang. Here it is, Gakuth. Thought about the three, we'll take it. Back to back threes from Gatguth. Who plays at Montana State University. Need two on one. Easy pass and Ben Rondan. Good pass from Abada. And uh, Ben Rondan. Move it on. The lob, watch out. Wide open over the top. Amot gets it. Good feed. And that is the play. The coach Deng drew up. Kansas is he. Another man who's come to Europe for the first time this year. Also playing in Croatia. Mokoy gets deep, finds Omot, and he gets the finish. Just waiting. Easy finish for him. Shot to five. Kwani's going to have to go quickly. Manages to find a little bit of space. Can't get the finish, but great work on the offensive glass. The tip home. And another make. Gakuth, his fourth three of the night. All new team in as the dunk from Amot on the out of bounds play. More time will be coming off the clock as we see Amot will back it out as well. Now with five on the clock. He gives it over to Wang, Wang. Extra pass, and Nakuth will make the jump up. The lead back to 10. Surely there's too little time for Tunisia. As the driving finish is good for Danawi. Good defense from South Sudan. Ben Rondan kicks it, and Tunisia will not get the score in, chart in time. This is the first time that South Sudan is competing in the qualifiers. Two wins and two outings, a perfect start for the team. Yeah, um, I think it's uh, it's good. It's easy to get beaten by uh, a good young team like South Sudan. So that's good for me. Um, I think that means we need to be uh, focused on our game plan and uh, keep the effort in our game plan. So I think that's good. Today was a great game plan. Um, we could 
say that we were playing in Tunisia and Yeah, but uh, you know, Tunisia uh they're a very tough team. You know, a lot of stuff happened. Uh we don't know exactly but for us we came with a game plan and the players uh executed to a T and I think that you know, we have the ability to play with anyone um, when we follow uh, the instruction. And I told the guys before the game, we've only been practicing uh, maybe three or four da- uh, four days before this, and some guys came late. But everybody in the staff could tell that we have a unique group. You know, they're very unselfish. They play well together. And it's that's the only way you're going to win games. Individual is not going to happen when it's a national team. It's always – collective efforts. Some guys didn't play a lot of minutes. Some guys didn't play well. But at the end of the day, it goes down, you know, a win for your country, and that's all that matters. Right. Thank you very much. And when you guys came in first, <coughs> you guys wanted to be like Tunisia. Now you guys beat the champs. So, um, and bringing in new uh, players into the team, uh, how does shape up the victory, and how do you guys feel about it as a coach, as a player? Uh, honestly, I think staff did a great job of, you know, you know, they took a lot of time to see which guys to bring in. And, you know, what was most important is, you know, a lot of guys come to this phase wanting to, you know, kind of, you know, do something for themselves. But I feel like collectively as a group, everybody bought in and they, you know, they felt like we, we, we have a bigger picture than just ourselves. And I think uh, everybody collectively, even guys that didn't play, they still showed a lot of heart and character on the bench, even though they didn't play, which just kind of shows how unique everybody is, you know, on this team. And, you know, like I said before, they did a great job of, you know, bringing in guys. And, you know, obviously guys weren't here from last time. Guys came in late, and we still we still found a way to, you know, do what we were supposed to do. Yeah, I think <coughs> just to answer that, what Nuli said is 100%. I think, you know, what makes Tunisia uh, so unique is, you know, uh, as a national team, uh, when you have guys that want to play for the national team uh, and they, you know, develop that, you know, uh, togetherness and grow up together, they also become better players. And we've seen that across, you know, history. If you look at Spain, all the players that were in the NBA and playing, the best players, they all came up together and they made each other better. We saw it with Argentina. Even myself, when I played for the uh, British team, myself, Pablo Cabancho, John Gordon, you kind of, you build a, co- you know, a togetherness when you spend time that you push each other to get better, you know, even today, you know, Nuni had an amazing game, right, Jackson had a great game, but I, I promise you, they got better because, one, they train so hard and they want to win for their country, but also they find something within themselves of what's the style that I excel at, you know, there's different ways of just using the national team to be better. And that's why Tunisia has been champion for so long. They're, every time, every tournament, I see the same guys. You know, we're trying to get to that level. Right. Any questions? Yes. Uh, Coach, you were known as an incredible defensive player during your career, and you always had the toughest defensive matchup on any given night. How has your defensive mentality impacted your game plan for coaching? No, it's a very good question. I think, you know, for me, when I was playing, I always watched uh, what players are good at, even till now when I watch basketball. I always want to watch tendencies and what players are comfortable, what they're doing. For me, I, you know, every player that I watch, even or every game, a lot of times from the set or from the lineup, I could tell you, you know, what kind of plays they're trying to run or what they're trying to do. So that helps me a lot. Uh, defensively, even when I was with the Bulls, I used to help the coaches a lot with what I covered with, and it's something that I always enjoy doing. Um, and with us now, with the coaching staff, Scouting and we, you know, we're trying to watch also what players Lee, like Lee, to could do. You, could you step forward? Yeah. Uh, we're trying to watch also what players like to do. So it, it helps a lot. Knowing the game and loving watching basketball helps a lot. Are there any, any other questions? Yes. Congratulations, Coach. And Kigali, Coach Ivy told us our future is bright. Uh, and, and I agree with, with him. Is this win a kind of statement for the future? It's a statement for today's game that we can play with anyone, uh, but it's really a thin line um, of getting caught up when everyone is praising you. You know, when I first took over, everyone was saying, you know, South Sudan has a chance to go, but there's still a lot of people who didn't believe. Our players 
can play. And, uh, you know, it's a, we have a lot of players that all these leagues need to look at. Uh, we can play with anyone. But if we let that get to us, we're in trouble. I think we're not there yet. What Tunisia has done, we, we're not, we haven't even scratched. We can go and celebrate right now because we beat a great team. Uh, but every team has a bad day, every great team. So we send a message, but we we show up, we don't show up tomorrow or we don't show up next tournament, then it was a lucky win. And that's what comes with it, with the territory. So we want, we, we're we here to stay. We're not here as a lucky team who got a lucky win. Is, is there a no question? Okay, we said a last question, one last question before we Nuni, uh, I know yesterday you didn't feel like you got the offensive game that you wanted. You got an incredible start today. How did you prepare for today's game? What was going through your mind to know to come out and give the performance you gave? Uh, honestly, it's uh, coaching staff and my, my teammates. You know, they told me to just be aggressive from the start. And, you know, that, that instilled a lot of confidence in me. You know, obviously yesterday, like you said, I didn't start off too well. Um, so, you know, my teammates and the coaching staff told me to just play my game and be aggressive from the jump. And I think that helped me a lot. Went right at the uh, shot blocker in Denga Kuth. Moved him out of the way to get the easy finish. Now Omot trying to get something going. A fast start here for Cameroon. They get it in. No fake. And now Benoit trying to find the space he does. Mbala, Mbala. McCoy steps through to the left hand again. Well, twice we've seen Jackson McCoy get deep. And they can't hold Jackson McCoy right now. He gets to the basket again, but leaves the finish short. It's a four on one break. No foul. And the easy dunk in the end is a good. Here we see Kwani trying to take the charge. There's a Dalamoto, a guy who did knock him down yesterday for Cameroon. Fails to get the score. Omar with the finish. With his pressure in the backcourt right now, McCoy is doing a pretty good job. And a lovely little fake from him. Let's get it into Ibwa. Step through. Finish doesn't go. Great offensive rebound for him. Sells the fake. Throws it down. And we see Ibwa with the finish. McCoy not able to get past him here. South Sudan, three on the clock. Kakuth fires it up and makes it. Guarded in the backcourt again. He just goes past his man, draws a lot of attention, gets the open three for Kwane. Even if he misses it, they're paying so much attention. He's going to kick it out to you guys. Or you guys. South Sudan managed to save it. Four on the clock. They're going to have to go. McCoy for three. It gets it to go. Oh, Jackson McCoy. Smart play from him. Now he'll take the three. And Kakuth knocks it down well. He had a couple of big ones yesterday as well. Gets to the ring. And Akuth is there for the offensive rebound. He's rejected. Chance to run for Cameroon. Nice step. And the finish is good. Here we see the rejection. And watch Peter run the floor. All the way in. Oh, the three is up. That's more South Sudan. Just move the ball to turn it over, though. Run out here. Can they finish? They can. It's been an offensive struggle for Jeremy Unzili. was one of eight, but he's made that one, and it's a six-point game. Still a long time to go here. The Kuth is free. Well, they might take a quick two. They go up high. Ebwa finishes hard. Paul Ebwa is a dunk threat. Are they going to get a shot away in time? They take the three. It doesn't go. So that is the end of the game. Hard earned victory for South Sudan. I just wanted to, I'm not asking you guys any questions, but when you look at the performance of your team today, I mean, after you beat Tunisia, um, you downplayed, and this is to you, Luol, you downplayed your, your, your team's performance and you said you're not yet there, but today you've beaten the other team that was the favorite in this group. Does this speak already of the talent, the immense talent that there is in this South Sudanese team? And to, to McCoy, we start with McCoy. Uh, you had an incredible game. Just talk to us. We're not sure 
uh, everything looked easy for you, even though you found out that you had a truly incredible performance. Talk to us about it. Um, well, I think most of it for us is is just showing that that we belong here. You know, like obviously being the being the youngest country in the world and whatnot. I l think like we just were always looked at as the underdogs and kind of sick of that narrative. So we just need to come out here and prove ourselves and show that we can play not with just anybody in Africa, but we believe anybody else in the world. So that was really what stayed in the back of our mind. And um, obviously we've got a great coaching staff and a great management who helps prepare us for everything that we need to face. And as long as we do what we need to do, stay together and locked in, like I said, I think we can play against anybody. Luke? Yeah, no. <coughs> I thought uh, we have a great group of guys. Um, I, I really enjoyed uh, being around these guys and coaching them. You know, before we step on the floor, everybody's committed. Uh, it's easy for the coaches to uh, pass the game plan. Uh, we respect every team that we see because all this stuff is still new to us. Um, you know, two years ago, uh, <coughs> two years ago, we weren't in a conversation, and when we first came in. Even just to get to to get to Afro Basket, it was a road, uh, a road that was up and down, and you know we got through and we kept learning every tournament. We kept learning this one. I really, you know, I looked at the group and I said we have a really good chance of doing well. And these guys, you know, stayed hungry every game. And it's a young group, uh, but every game for them w meant so much. And you know when you. When you're around a group of guys like that, it makes it so much easier. Every ga every game, we had a reason of why we should play hard. It, it was really easy for them to relax, uh, you know, and come out and just play. But they battled. Uh, we had, you know, good moments, bad moments. But overall, I thought we deserved to win the game. Yeah. R run us a little bit through the, the game management, especially with McCoy. Um, in, in the first half, you've scored 20 points. And everyone was thinking perhaps this could be the day when um, the record established by Jordan Wara, the most points scored in a game, 36, could have been beaten. But, that, but then you rested him. Just run us through the, that, that management. Yeah, I think, you know, for me, he had a great first half. Uh, but in the back of my mind, I played um, in an NBA lockout season where we were playing three games in, uh, in a row. In the NBA, you always play back to back. Three games in a row, I think it was uh, – something between 9% uh, to 14% uh, teams that were playing on a third night would win. Um, and I felt it. So I knew that fatigue was settling. Um, and I think with a lot of teams here, fatigue was settling in the third game. It's three games in a row. So my management was I wanted to make sure that he's in the game at the end of the game. He does a good job of controlling the pace for us in the end of the game and making good decisions. I wasn't thinking about him breaking the record, to be honest. I just wanted to win and use him correctly, um, you know, so, but Jackson has been getting better and better, um, better and better each tournament, and, you know, sometimes people forget he's 22 years old, I think 22, no? 21, yeah. 20, <coughs> 21 years. 21, yeah. yeah, so it's even, you know, to be able to do that at 21, um, you know, and I keep talking about we have a lot of players that can compete in a lot of these leagues, big leagues, and they're going to get there, but now people are going to start looking at South Sudan because of the job they're doing and start taking these players. Uh, they're very skilled and they could play, but they never had the platform to show it because we never had a national team. Uh, and now I'm urging teams, whether it's Val, Europe, anywhere, you, you know, we have the players. You know, we, we got to start watching us. You know, um, McCoy, you, you did well to mention South Sudan is the youngest country in the world. Um, not too many people expect it at this point, but it looks you're getting closer to that dream of getting to the World Cup. How huge will this be, not just for this generation of players, but for the entire country and for the growth of basketball over there? To be honest, there's no, there's no words that can really describe it, you know, um, the things that we're able to do, because obviously our country has been through a ton, and we don't need to get into the history, but to see the joy that it brings to the people, not to mention our parents, um, to to witness firsthand, you know, the terrible thing, because a lot of us who are on this team grew up on the western side of the world and didn't have to go through everything that they had to go through and moving countries, not being able to speak the language and whatnot. <coughs> those are just things that's like, those are really incredible for us, let alone our parents who did that. So to, be, to have the opportunity to come here and represent, like there's literally no better feeling, you know what I mean? So that's literally no words can describe it.
Flu, how would you describe the quality of basketball here? I mean, a lot of upsets, especially yesterday and today. Um, Jar Congo inflicting some on Senegal, their first defeat on home court for what, three, four years. Um, you beating the the defending African champions and then beating Cameroon. How would you describe the quality of African basketball? <coughs> I think basketball is getting better in Africa. Um, you know, when you have powerhouses being beaten, uh, obviously a day comes where when you've been so good for so long, things happen where you would lose. But um, since I got on board, I really am very surprised by how many teams are trying their hardest to, uh, to, to change you know, the Basketball Federation. And since we're on that topic, I really urge FIBA to change some of the rules that are being uh, implemented for the countries, for the players to be qualified. We have a lot of players that are growing up outside of our country. It's not, a, it's not by choice. But to naturalize a player with FIBA is such a hard process. Uh, in a Western world, if one of your parents is from that country, you're automatically from that country. It should be the same with Africans, whether you know, you grew up outside. If any of your parents are from that country and you could prove it, it should be automatic. But right now, we're going through a lot just for players to be declared. Even South Sudan, and there's a lot of countries. We have a lot of kids that grew up outside of the country because of what's going on. It's not their fault that it takes so hard to naturalize them. And that's happening to every other country. I'm sorry to get off topic, but, you know, FIBA needs to look at that. And African federations need to come together and bring it up to FIBA. It's so hard for players to be naturalized. Players want to come back home and play for their countries, but a lot of times they deny that they're not from their country. And if not, if it's not being spoken about, it's not going to be looked at. So it needs to be looked at, right? We, we, this is 2022. African basketball is different now. A lot of people are returning home to represent their country. They should be allowed to, right? If a kid is from England uh, and they get their passport, he's not going to be a kid that grew up in South Sudan, right? But if his mom is from England, automatically he gets it. Uh, if a South Sudanese kid grew up in England or grew up in Australia, if his parents are South Sudanese automatically, you should get it. But it's a hard process, and we, we want to get over that. Yeah. Are, there, are there any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, Jackson, can you talk about the team's growth from AfroBasket, and then as well as your growth. It seems like you took a step forward in your play uh, from AfroBasket to this this window. Uh, yes, definitely. Um, the team the team has been amazing, you know, from the jump. And uh, so, to be honest, the team has been amazing from the jump, and we've always known the potential that we've had. Um, the obviously, like I said, the level that we can play that that we can play at, but it's just about just staying, staying together. That's literally all it has. And like just doing that alone and with the talent that we have and the staff that we have, it just, it just means that we can reach um, unimaginable heights. And then personally, um, obviously I just started my first year playing professional in Croatia and that helped me a lot, you know. Uh, just professional basketball is not what I expected, especially coming uh, just out of two years in college, but just that alone, has helped me uh, come here play, obviously against top players, amazing coaches, physicality, and just just the process. I'm a firm believer in you get out what you put in, and you know personally how much work that we've put in, personally and as a group. I feel like that's just starting to show, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. So I'm very excited for us all. Are there any questions? If there are not, the last question, Mia, is how do you prepare for the next phase <coughs> of the qualifiers? No, we will do the same job. Um, you know, we still have the underdog mentality. I know we're 3-0, and so we can't get carried away with that. Uh, we got to face these teams again. So we got to come with our best effort. Um, you know, this tournament, uh, we had a great tournament, but it's over with. You know, we got to prepare and get better. Each each of our players will go and work on their game and get better. And we also got to do a good job of coming in with a mindset, um, you know, and coming in hungry and staying hungry. We haven't done nothing. Um, you know, we're 3 and 0, but we can easily be 3 and 3 if we don't become if we don't come uh, prepared. Lowell Deng, head coach of South Sudan and uh, Anyambani McCoy, thank you very much for coming and congratulations on your incredible run in this window. Thank you. Thank you very much.